YouTube, what's happening? It is Saturday, August 3rd, and as you can see, we got a full slate of baseball to talk about today. If you're new here, I go through each game and do a full-on breakdown, going through props, stats, money lines, nerfies, everything you could think of. Then I get my thoughts to the end of the game before we move on to the next one. So on top of that, you can see how we're doing. I put the record at the bottom. I went eight and four yesterday, 3.49 units of profit yesterday. That puts me up to almost 50 units of profit. I was up to like almost 80, but July was a rough month. We don't talk about July around here because August is two and oh so far. The vibes could not be higher in August. That's what we're doing. Positive vibes. You speak good things, good things tend to happen. So that's what we do around here. We don't dwell on the negatives. We focus on the positives. So drop a like, subscribe, and let's go ahead and jump into that first game right now all right first game we got toronto in new york the yankees are a pretty heavy favorite at home with an over under of nine looking at the numbers 53 percent nerfy based on what they've done this year you can see it's 4.7 versus six the yankees have the advantage in runs 243 263 they're both in the top 13 in batting average but again advantage yankees so and toronto striking out a little bit more 10.3 strikeouts over the last three which if you're looking for a road on strikeout prop it's six and a half right now that might be something you might want to take so that's up to you hope so let's look a little closer Rodon how he has done I mean his worst game of the season was right here 10 and 8 versus Toronto and that was June 27 so is this going to be a redemption game or is he going to get beat up again we'll see but since that game he's been what you pretty much want out of a picture uh starting pitcher you get what you want so pretty good numbers Barrios on the other hand he was great against the Yankees seven innings two hits to earn his game on the 27th but then since then had three not so great games and then settled in a little bit so we have some up and down pitches of what i'm seeing so look closer at the prop screen and if you're wondering what props are this is outlier this is what i use for all my props and information there's a link in the description you can check it out get you a free week it's worth it trust me you'll love it so looking closer at barrios i want to see his history versus the yonks and we can see there's a lot of green that ain't good. There's a lot of 375, 381, 300, 321. That's not good. And then also judge three home runs, seven RBIs. I see three dudes with over a 1.0 OPS. I see a couple nine OPSs, an eight OPS. That ain't good numbers. <laughs> that, that tells me they like batting against Barrios. That ain't good. And against righties, they're about 50-50, maybe a little more than 50-50 towards, they do pretty good against righties. So looking at the props, I've already gone through all these props, but I'll show you them. I'm not really feeling any of these. Nothing's really, truly standing out like, ooh, I like that. So I didn't like any of his. Let's look at Rodon now and look at his matchup. Uh, him, historically, versus Rano. Again, what do you notice? A lot of green. That ain't good. So, And the first thing I definitely notice is Vladdy with a 5.56 five, with a one one three, And then I noticed Springer with a 500 with two homers and six RBIs and a 1.8. These two dudes might just tee off on Rodon. So we might have a high scoring game in the bronx today so oh let's look at the props a little bit again i've already looked through these i'll come back to strikeouts because that's the only one that might be interesting because see none of these look good but then strikeouts will be interesting because he is striking out a ton he's hit a bunch it's six and a half and you can get plus juice on it so i mean that's going to be something a lot of people are going to take i'm not i'm going to pass on that personally because i'm just not i don't know if he's going to make it that long to get seven strikeouts so well, he got eight against Toronto in the game. He gave up eight earned runs. So, I mean, take that with what you will. So, I'm going to pass on that. So, now, if we look at the hit props, based on the two, the two lists of bats and histories we have, I came up with these three. I got Vladdy, I got Judge, and I got George Springer. And I put those three dudes and bats that stood out. And the Vladimir Guerrero getting a hit is 100% in the last 10 games. So, But it is also minus 260, 275, depends on where you look. So, I mean, it's pretty pretty sure he's going to get a hit and he might get over one and a half R, uh, hrrs is minus 145 that's much better nine out of ten bases is good with him i mean i mean come on there's plenty of things with him judge strikeout 70 percent. there's plenty of options here and then i wouldn't do anything springer because you can see he's been struggling recently even though he's done good against rodon he just hasn't been good recently so i don't know i think i want i I think I'm going to leave the props alone because I want to see how Rodon pitches because he's done great, but this is the team that blew him up a month ago. So I don't know if he's going to come out and be just Cy Young worthy, if he's going to come out and just be 10 hits, eight earned again. So I'm going to leave these props alone. You get to see them. And then instead, 
I'm going to pop over here and I'm going to take this over of nine because it's 115. I can deal with that over of nine. That sounds good to me. I'm going to take that and just move on to the next game. All right, next up, we got St. Louis in Chicago. You can see it's a slight favor for Chicago at home. Eight is your total. Looking at this, 62% nerfy based on what they've done this year. Offenses are 5.7 and eight runs a game. I can't do a nerf when the offense is that hot. And they're batting 283 and 315. That's seven and fourth in the last three. Um, that's 10th and th third in runs in the last three. So yeah, the offenses are pretty, pretty hot right now. So Nerfie's off the table for sure. Let's look a little closer at the pitchers. We got Gibson going out there. We can see his last game against the Cubs was literally the 13th. He gave up 10 hits four earned that's his worst game on the screen you can see um 10 hits is a lot of hits so you can see what he's done uh italian's going out there he faced st louis seven and three was his last game on the 14th you can see the numbers he his worst game was his last game against since he was a triple six you can see what he's done uh let's look closer at the props this is interesting so i pulled up their histories and there is a lot of green for gibson you can see all the green and we got we got 2.3 ops 1.4 1.8 1.5 some of these numbers are what two point i forgot about that one then you got bellinger who has two home runs and four rbis but he only bats a buck 67 and 12 at bat so either he's hitting a home run or he's getting out that's what you got with him he is very up and down this is a wild list to see so you can see the numbers and then Cubs against righties are just not that great. They're better against lefties unless your name is Kyle Gibson. So looking at the props a little bit, you can see I've already kind of went through these props. You get a zero. I bet this too. I bet on him to get like over, it's like four and a half, I think again, and he got zero. So I say he's banned. He will stay banned. So no strikeout props for me on him. So hits, earned runs, walks outs i personally i don't really see anything that stands out to me here and i go to italian and i look at the same thing i see a lot of green as well another two, both sides a lot of green it happens when you face each other a lot so and look at these numbers 417 421 400 375 look at the ops is one 1 1.2 1 1.4 we got some high numbers it's Ooh, I mean, these these bats should do decent against these pitchers because historically they have done so. And Cardinals versus righties, you can see what they've done. They you can see they're about they're better with righties than lefties. So it's a eh. and then we have pitching outs again. I don't really trust any of the pitcher props because these bats should do decent against these pitchers today based on history historically what they've done against them. So I don't trust the pitching outs. I I don't trust the strike. Four and a half. Come on. I mean, last three games he hasn't come, he hasn't even hit it. So no hits, no earned, no and walks. See, I don't like any of those. So looking at all that, you can come over here to the everyone thing and see every single batter and what they've done and what they've done the last ten, last five, all the usual stuff. You see if anything stands out. I've gone through these. I've looked at these. There's there's several options you can make because. There's so many people in the green with high OPSs and high averages, but I don't think I like enough to do any of them. I want to keep it semi-simple. I don't want to go overboard because I could easily load this up with like 10 bets. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to do one play. I'm going to do just like the last game. I'm going to come back here. I see both offenses are hot. I see the total is eight, which is even better than nine in the last game. Eight is my favorite total to hit because you give me a 4-4 tie, I'm a winner. Unless the game gets canceled, I'm a winner because 4-4, you got to score again. So for me, I'm going to take this over eight. I'm not taking a side. I'm not. There's there's plenty of props you could make in this hitter area, but I'm going to pass on those. I'm just going to focus on this over eight and move on to the next game. All right, next up, we got Milwaukee in Washington. We can see Milwaukee is slightly favored. Over under is nine. Looking at the numbers, 57.8% nerfy based on what they've done this year. 3.7 versus 2.3 in offense. Both of them not doing too good. Slight advantage Milwaukee. 245 versus 231. They're both in the middle of the pack on the batting average. And strikeouts are top of the bottom 10 so yeah and middle for washington so no nah, slight advantage washington there so looking over the pitchers we got dj hers going out there you can see his numbers they still ain't give this man a picture yet come on come on yes man hook him up with the pitcher so either way you can see what he's done he's been pretty decent really can't complain no not really and then savali's going out there for milwaukee i almost said tampa but they even got him a pitcher with a new hat on see they hooked him up so then yeah he's been a little up and down when he's with tampa's 
you know, since he's been with Milwaukee, he's done pretty decently. So up and down, both pitchers to me are about the same. There's nothing that truly stands out. The only thing we have a slight advantage with Milwaukee with the bats, that's about it. So, so far, I'm not liking a money line. I don't like the Nerfy because the bats are middle. Everything's middle. I need some low batting averages for the Nerfy and some great pitching. So, so far, don't like those. Total is, what, eight? Nine. Ooh, okay. Let's look a little closer, see what stands out. Hers, history, there is none. Don't have any of that. Milwaukee versus lefties, they're a little bit better against righties because some of these dudes just struggle against lefties, as you see. But then uh, you have 340 for Contreras. He likes lefties, so it's yeah, up and down. So looking over at the props form, earned runs, up and down. I'm not liking any of those. Strikeout props is four and a half. Um, no, it hits four and a half and walks. I don't know. I'm going to watch those show walks. I don't take walks anymore. It's just a pain to take them. So, because Hard Rock doesn't have it on their book. So, and let's look over at Aaron here. We'll see his history. We see bang, bang. We got some history and it's all green pretty much, but it's all three, two, two, three. It's, it's one game. It's not many at bats. I mean, still 2.6, 2.5. These are good, but still, I need more information before I can make an educated decision. Washington versus Rides is very split. There's nothing that truly stands out. No one's terrible. No one's great. So nothing. It's all bleh. It's, it's average. So let's look at some props. Hits very up and down. Don't like that. Strikeouts making two nice little cell towers. <laughs> Looks like the signal on your phone. Ah, that's crazy. Uh, earned runs very up and down. He is very inconsistent. And walks. He has been crazy walks and then zero. So see, very inconsistent. I need consistency when I do some pitcher props. So I don't like any of the props. And if you want to look over here at the hitter props, we barely have anybody in the green in this part. Usually, I mean, we're already at 70s. We got a few 80s and a couple 90s on hits for Vargas. But other than that, it's kind of eh. So for me, personally, I don't like any of the props. I don't like the nerf beat. I don't like the side. I don't like the total. So that means for this one, I'm going to completely pass and just move on to the next game. All right, next up, we got KC in Detroit. We can see KC's a slight favorite on the road. Eight and a half is your total. Uh, only problem is we don't have a pitcher for Detroit yet. That doesn't help. You kind of need that to do something. So we don't have it, but we have odds. So, and we have offensive numbers and we see Casey's numbers are still through the roof. There's still a lot of single digits. Detroit is still rocking some thirties. One running game in the last three, 128 average in the last three for 30th. They are terrible offensively. Casey is awesome offensively. That's not good. So we see the difference there. Uh, let's look over at the picture we can look at. Lorenzen from Texas is now a Casey Royal. So we can see his game. Uh, so you can see what he's done recently. Pretty good. I mean, this is well outside of a triple five. I mean, great five innings. He doesn't pitch too much, so I'm interested to see how they use him going forward. But you can see what he's done in his games this year. We can look at some props on him to see his history and stuff, and just to see uh, a history versus Detroit. He does have a little bit 16 at bats versus Baez, one home run, 313. That's that's good for Baez, but I mean, the rest of the team is eh. in Detroit versus righties. Detroit versus everybody. I mean, come on. You can see the numbers. Uh, it's not great. Lefties are better. I mean, Detroit is terrible offensively right now. They just, ugh. So let's look at some props. So we can do that. We might be able to get a pitcher prop here because of how bad Detroit is. Hits, it's four and a half. He seems to hit this consistently, and it's really close. I don't like to be that close to the number. Strikeouts, three and a half. And how is Detroit striking out? They're actually not striking out much. There's six in the last three games of seven. They just can't do anything else, so... That's hilarious. So we see the numbers. I'm not taking a strikeout prop. Earn runs. I mean, under two and a half. I think my under two and a half. What, what, what do you expect is going to happen? Now, I took the funny, the cheeky prop of un, team total under one and a half at the first five. That was kind of, that was risky. This is, what? Okay, that was Toronto. That was the Angels. And that was Baltimore. Who was this? The Rays. The White Sox. Milwaukee, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to take this because, I mean, if Detroit gets two runs, hey, I've cooled it this time, uh, but they, they've they only been getting 2.3 in the last week and 3.5 in the last two weeks, so, yeah, just for him pitching, and he only pitches like five innings, so, yeah, I think I'm going to add that. I think I like that one. Renzen, under 2.5 earned runs. I just... If Detroit breaks out, they break out. What can I do? But hey, I'll take it. So, so we'll do that. Pop back over here. Walks. 
and he walks a ton too but we ain't taking walks around here so i don't have anything else i can really look at i mean i could probably pop up the, the hitter props just to see if anything stands out i mean we got a lot of yellow showing up uh, no hundreds in the last 10 only 290s and that's renfro to get a hit which is heavily juice Furman to get a hit which is heavily juice hey if you put them two together in a parlay it probably comes out to like a buck 20 so or right at plus uh, even money so those, that might be a fun one but outside of that we need to know who's actually pitching for Detroit so I can look. But outside of that, I don't have those. So for me, I'm going to take that Lorenzen under two and a half earned runs. I'm also, I'm going to be brave. I, I, did, I didn't take a single money line yesterday. I'm going to take one today. I'm going to take the KC money line today at the minus 135. I'm going to take that as well. And we're going to move on to the next game. All right, next up. And before I jump into it, people are probably asking why I didn't just take Kansas City team total over. It's because I don't know who the pitcher for Detroit is. If I knew the pitcher, I probably would have took it. But I want to be certain on who's pitching first before I take a team total over against that person. So right now, it's just taking it against a ghost. I can't do that. So we just took the under. It worked out great. So let's focus on this one it is Arizona Pittsburgh. We see that it is Pittsburgh slightly favored. Eight and a half is your total. Looking at this, we see 54% nerfy based on what they've done this year. And offense for Arizona is number one. I mean, that's what they are. They are just been, do you see the trend line? You can barely see it. It's so much through the box. 10.3 runs in their last three for one, first. 381 for first. They have just been lights out. Amazing. Pittsburgh, six runs, 289 at seventh and six. Their offense is doing great too. So, but they are striking out a good bit because Arizona's not striking out. So let's look closer at the pitchers. We got Jordan Montgomery. Come on down. You got rocked against Washington last time. You got rocked against Minnesota. You got rocked against San Fran. Now you get to face Pittsburgh, who is doing pretty their top 10. So have fun with that. I expect Pittsburgh to score if he runs off him pretty easily. So you see what he's done. And then Keller's coming out here. Keller got a little rocked against St. Louis. He faced Arizona already, went 2 2 2 in seven innings in his last game. So that's is saying something he did good against arizona when arizona's been this hot montgomery didn't get to face pittsburgh so you can see the stat he got rocked against st louis a little bit but outside of that he's been pretty good so if we go a little deeper we see the history keller against arizona arizona has not much success there's a lot of red and like suarez 143 an over 10 for Bradamo. you can see the stats some are just not good then you get like 250, 400 only in two out of five of bats. That doesn't mean nothing to me. Arizona versus righties, about a 50 50 split. You can see nothing truly stands out. Looking at the props, we'll see strikeouts is four and a half. I hate that number for strikeouts. I don't want to do the number one strikeouts to Arizona. So that's going to be a no. Hits is going to be a no. Earn runs, mm -mm. walks. I mean, no. And pitching outs. I'm a little scared of pitching outs after what happened a few days ago with Cease. That kind of worries me. So I'm a little, eh. A lot of teams are going. To, a lot of teams are going to start focusing on postseason and trying to limiting their starters, trying to get them to the postseason. So that's a thing to notice. So if we look at Jordan Montgomery, we look at his history. A lot of red as well. Interesting. So we have two sixty seven, three hundred with some of bats, but outside of that, buck sixty seven, buck twenty five, just ugh, not good. And Pittsburgh versus lefties. The Pittsburgh's kind of good against lefties. You see the numbers are good. Some, I mean, some are not great, but they're most are pretty good. Like four nineteen for Bart. Ooh, so let's look at the earned runs, strikeouts, hits, walks, outs. Everything's up and down. Nothing's truly standing out. We get a lot of this. I need some of this. So I don't like any of those. We can see the props for the batters now. I mean, World Jr. is 100% to get a hit. That's for sure. Corbin McCarroll can get a hit. You put these together. Peterson's probably going to get a hit. Marte can get a hit. You can see, you can put these dudes together and you can get you a nice little parlay out of some of them. So I'll probably have a few more parlays I'll give out to some later on today, just not in the video. So um, um, people in the Discord might get those just for fun because they're for fun. That's all they are. They're not part of the video. So uh, you can see what happens. It's up and down. I don't like any of this. I mean, no. what's the over under? It's eight and a half. We have two super hot offenses with these. We have two pitchers that have been uh, with history of not doing too great. Taking the over might be a little crazy. Mm. Eight and a half. Yeah, I'm going to leave that alone because initially I wanted to take the over, but now I'm worried because their history and how they do against the certain hand they pitch with. So for me, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to not touch it. 
I, if anything, I think it might even go under now. So for me, I'm going to leave it alone and we're just going to move on to the next game. All right, another quick one. We're missing a pitcher, but it's Boston in Texas. Boston's a slight favorite with a seven and a half. Looking at the numbers, 54% nerfy based on what they've done this year. Uh, Boston's offense has been on fire, kind of similar to the KC Detroit game. Same situation. One team is amazingly hot. The other one's kind of cold. So 6.7 versus 2.7 and a six and 25th in runs. 325, 173, Boston is third, Texas 27. So you can see, and neither team, neither team striking out much. That's good. The only pitcher we know is Tanner here, Tanner Hawk. Uh, you can see his numbers, what he has done. Dude does give up a handful of runs every game. That's what he's known for, pretty much. That's what he does. He got blew up against San Diego, had a great game against Oakland. Uh, terrible all-star game. So <laughs> outside of that, you can see what he does. So yeah, I mean, you're going up against Texas. Um, you're, the, the, so we have a pitcher who's up and down against the offense is not great right now. So that's not a fun start. Let's look at the props a little bit, see if anything stands out. So do you have a history against Texas? You do have some history. Good. It's a lot of red. That ain't good for Texas. I'm telling you right now, Simeon with a 125 ain't going to get it done for you, buddy. That ain't going to work. Garcia's got a home run and three of bats. But outside of that, it's a lot of nothing. And Texas for his righties, they're better against lefties. That ain't good for Texas. So... <laughs> Oh no, this is going to be the, I, this feels like the exact same setup as the other one, except I'm not taking hot to get under two and a half earned runs. I, hell no, no shot. Strikeouts is four. Is everyone strikeout prop four and a half today? I mean, that's like the sixth one. Hits, earned runs. See, I'm two and a half. Uh -uh. No, no shot. I can't pass outs. Uh, you know, I'm just not feeling the outs right now. Mm -mm. So, um, we don't have much stats on this. We don't know who's pitching for, for tech uh for texas the offense is boston they are good i'd be, be shocked if mm, i wouldn't be shocked if baseball anything can happen i kind of just want to take boston money line on this one just because i don't think texas will have the offense to score enough uh even on hawk and then texas probably going with a bullpen game or a minor uh minor leaguer or something that's probably what they're doing that's what they usually do so yeah i think i'm gonna rock with Boston on the money line because they're slightly favored. Yeah, we're being brave. We're taking money lines when we probably shouldn't, but we're doing it. So there we go. Boston money line on the list. Not taking anything else because we don't know who the other pitcher is and just move on to the next game. All right, next up, we got the White Sox and the Twins. Twins are minus 190, seven and a half the total. 54% nerfy based on what they've done this year. Look at that losing streak for the White Sox. 18 straight losses. That is amazingly bad. Crazy. 25th and runs at 2.7 while batting a buck 70 for 28th. Minnesota's six runs per seventh, but they're only batting 216. That's not good. That's 23rd. So, I mean, I almost want to avoid betting on any game involving the White Sox until they win because it's like, how are you trying to set a record? What are you trying to do here? What are you doing? So, um, I know a lot of people were on the White Sox last night thinking they were going to get the win, but then they didn't because Minnesota scored 10 runs on them. So let's look at the pitchers a little closer. We got Obear going out there from Minnesota. You can see what he's done. Four and three or six innings against the White Sox last time out a couple games ago. Eight innings, one hit, 11 strikeouts against Detroit because we see how bad Detroit is recently. So yeah, he might replicate that against Chicago today. And Crochet, Mr. I'm not pitching in the playoffs unless you sign me to a longer deal, is still in Chicago for a certain reason. <laughs> Nobody wants to deal with that personality. So you can see what he's done. Um, he's been good outside, you know. Yeah, he's been pretty good, so we can't complain. But he's only pitching, his, look at the innings. This is so weird. I don't know. I think that was for trade value, but now I'll say he's not being traded. I don't know what the hell's going on in Chicago, so... I mean, can you can you really take his props? I can't. So let's look at the closer. Let's start with Obeder. Obeder history. He has a little bit. Vaughn's got 20 at bats, 250. Benintendi's got a buck 88, 273 for sheets. Nothing impressive here. Lopez 400. Nothing stands out. Chicago versus lefties versus righties versus any hands. It doesn't matter. Chicago's not that good. So <laughs> nothing. There are a lot of ones, a lot of low twos. That's what you get with them. Let's look at some props. Outs. I mean, he's climbing, but 17 and a half, uh, he should get, he should get six innings. I mean, come on. It's Chicago. We see how poor their offense is. So, earn runs, walks, what was the strikeout? Six and a half. Oh, he got 11. 
How much did he have against? He only has six against Chicago last time. I think I'm liking these pitching out just because of this trend. Uh, he's been showing he can go at least six. That's seven. That's eight. Hopefully he doesn't go that much this time. Just come back to six. Just go with a nice, simple six. Six up, down, done. So we're going to do Obear over 17.5 PO. Whoa, wait a minute. No, I'm not. Look at that juice. Whew. Oh, let me take that right back off my list. I'm not trying. No, I'm not trying to fill it with this kind of stuff. That's crazy. That's too much. That's too much. And then we'll see crochets, history. What oh, we have a lot of zeros, a lot of red. Mm, not good. Minnesota versus lefties. Minnesota's good versus lefties. There we go. That's what we like to see. Lots of lots of three hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And crochet probably won't pitch much, which means the bullpen comes in. So, ah, I, I, I said I want to avoid it, but I think I might be taking that Minnesota money line today. Ooh, I think I am because, yeah, he's gone downhill. It's because they won't let him pitch and trade them last stuff. I, he hasn't pitched. When was the last time he acted? I don't even have outs because they don't even know. See, they don't have outs because they don't know what to do. So, okay. And let's look at batters just because we can. Uh, let's see what's a lot of, a lot of, lot of White Sox on this list, surprisingly. Believe it or not. Hmm. Wow, let me take off strikeouts. That's, now I got all on here. Okay, that's why. Yeah, there's not much green for this game. So, ooh, ugly game. Ugly game. So, we're going to leave the props alone. We're just going to take the... We're going to keep it simple, stupid. We're just going to take the Minnesota hits lefties. Crochet hasn't pitched much. They don't let him go. The, the bullpen will come in eventually. Minnesota should be able to get it done. We'll take the Minnesota money line. Hey, if they lose, congratulations, Chicago. You broke your losing streak. So, we'll take that and move on to the next game. All right, next up, we got San Fran and Cincinnati. San Fran coming off the Blake Snell no-hitter last night. Uh, we have since he favored in this one with a total of nine. Looking at this, 61.6% nerfy based on what these two teams have done. And look at the stats. They are atrocious when it comes to bats. Two versus 3.3. That's 28 and 22nd. A buck 94 and a buck 96. That's 26 and 25th. The nerfy is 100% on the table. So we're rocking so far with the nerfy. Are the pitchers good? Well, Hunter Green's pretty good. So we can see. Dude has been just balling out recently. You can see what he's done. Awesome numbers. And then Harrison has also been balling out. So outside this four, four this faux faux faux, this Wendy's here against Cleveland, he's been good his last three. So for me, I'm Nerfy's on the list. I've already typed it up because I already saw it and I went, oh yeah, that's a Nerfy I like. So be cautious. When I say that, that might be the one that loses. So I felt the same way yesterday too. So <laughs> I went over two. So something about Yerpes recently has been hitting like crazy, but I'm taking a Nerfy based on statistics. I do not care. Let's look closer at the props. Uh, Harrison history against the Reds. It's up and down, but we don't have many at bats. So nothing truly to look at. Uh, since he versus lefties, they're better against lefties and righties, but still the numbers aren't too good. I mean, there's a 300, but nothing else is really standing out. Props for Harrison. Earn runs has been great here recently. He's really settled in. Strikeouts has gone up, which you want to see. His hits have gone down, and his outs have stayed consistent, but still, I don't... Ugh. So, Hunter Green, you can see what he's done in his history. Again, not many at-bats against the Giants. San Fran versus Rice is terrible, apparently. You can see the numbers. The only green one is Bailey, and it's still not that great. So, ugh. I mean, it's a 318 for Luciano, but he's better against lefties, so... Yeah, Fitzgerald's better against lefties too. So, uh, yeah, leave that alone. Outs, he's been hitting consistent seven innings. Seven, six, seven, seven. So, I mean, Hunter Green should have a field day and be able to do this. This should be a low-scoring game. I mean, it really should. So, I kind of want to go green over... Wait, what's the number? Why are you going to give me this number of these crazy odds? That is ridiculous. I almost don't know. Nope, taking it right back off. I don't want to take something with these kind of odds. I hate that. There's not much value in that. So, um, I know profit's profit and all. I say that, but uh, I'm trying not to give out the picks like that because then somebody will mm, see now. Uh, strikeouts. He's not striking out much. Hits, earn runs, walks. And I don't like any of those. So, and look at the hit stuff, which these two teams, the highest we got to 80. We have nobody at 90 and nobody at 100 because. Oh, Fitzgerald's the only one doing anything for San Fran, it looks like. So, Ellie's over a base. I'm sure Ellie's got steals on here somewhere you can look at. There's tons of things to look at on here. So, for me, I'm going to go the Nerfy for sure. Um, what was Harrison's outs? Let's go back. Let's pop over here. Oh, yeah, his outs were up and down. Yeah, okay. So, uh, we're going to go that for sure. What's total? Total a nine. 
Up under nine? What? Okay, yeah, we're going under nine as well with the nerfy. So, um, yeah, with these offenses, I just can't. I just can't. I got to take the nerfy under nine, move on next game. All right, next up, we got Baltimore and Cleveland. We have Baltimore as a slight favorite with a total of eight and a half. Looking at this, we have 56% nerfy based on what they've done this year. And we can see 5.7 versus 7.7. .7. That's 10th and 4th. 4th for Cleveland. They have the advantage. 224 for 19th for Baltimore. Meanwhile, 296 for Cleveland for 5th. So the offense is clearly leaning Cleveland's direction. In this one, you, the trend lines are up. Baltimore's down. Everything's leading Cleveland's way, including a five-game winning streak. Looking at the pitchers. Baltimore sending out Eflin. You see what he's done. His first game away from Tampa. 10 hits, 3 earned. You can see that. Because Toronto, 7 Ks. I mean, the hits were extremely high, but he only gave up 3 runs. So, yeah, I guess it was good. So, you can see what he did in 6 innings. Quality start, if you will. And then Cleveland sending out Cantillo. Cantillo has pitched one game. And he went 3.1, 4-3. He is a reliever, so this really should be a bullpen game for Cleveland. So, Take with that what you will. That makes it really hard to cap this game out. So let's dig a little deeper. He has no history. And Baltimore versus lefties, they're better against righties. There's a couple guys like Mountcastle and Jimenez and Adley do pretty good against lefties. Everybody else is eh. So, and there's some guy named G. Henderson. I don't know who that is. If you know who this imposter is, let me know. Because this dude is not supposed to be in the majors right now. So <laughs> he is terrible right now. So. Let's look at the history. He doesn't have much. We're not even looking at his props. There's one prop. I mean, come on. So, all right, let's go over here. Eflin's history. There's some green on here, but given two, one, two, one, two, four at bats, not worth really looking at. Uh, Cleveland versus righties, they're better against lefties, but still the numbers aren't, aren't bad. They're decent numbers, unless you're like him. So, outside of it's pretty decent. So, even Quan's 316. I mean, come on. So, we can see the props for him. We will look at these. His strikeouts have gone up recently, three and a half, but it is Cleveland. Cleveland's one of those three teams that never strike out. Them, the Royals, and the Padres never strike out much. Cleveland, second. They didn't even have to look. I knew it was going to be a top five. So, there you go. So, mm, yeah, I'm not taking it. Hits. He gave up 10 hits, but mm, no. I've, watched, I've seen Eflin enough times to know he is extremely up and down from being here in Tampa. So up and down. Outs is up and down. See, that's where we're not, not that ain't good either. So here, I don't, mm, I'm not, this is a weird one. It's all because of this guy. Because they're doing like a bullpen. We don't know how long he's going to pitch. He's pitched one game. Uh, then we got Baltimore. Uh, yeah, for me personally, I'm not liking any of this. I think... Oh yeah, let's let me just look at hitter props too real quick. See if anything stands out. Like Jackson Holiday to get a strikeout, it's hundred percent. There you go. There's a fun one for two hundred. <laughs> pair that with a Cowser hit, that because that apparently hits all the time too. So you pair them together, you get you a nice little parlay. So have fun with that. Gunner, I hit. Yeah, come eight. Mm, are you sure about that? I don't believe you. So you can see that though there. So I don't like those. I'm going to leave those alone. To me, I don't like this game completely. I'm going to just pass on this and just move on to the next one. All right. Speaking of Tampa, we got Tampa Bay and Houston. Houston's a pretty moderate favorite. Eight is your total. Looking at this, 42% nerfy based on what they've done this year. 4.3 for 15 versus 3.3 for 22nd on the runs. That's a slight advantage. Tampa, 237, 235. That's 14 to 15. There's no advantage in there. They're both middle of the pack, literally. And Tampa is the worst team in strikeouts in the last three games at 13, which is dead last because there's only 30 teams in the majors right now. So, and Houston's fifth at 6.3. They're doing good. So, pitchers, we got Zach L. Lytle, 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 however you want to say his name. I don't care. Zach did great in his last game. Terrible against, I say terrible, not great against the Yankees. Terrible against Texas, we'll say that one. Uh, he hasn't faced Houston recently, but he's very up and down. Blanco is going out there. You can see what he does. He was, he's been slipping a little bit. I'm surprised he's given up four runs in his last two games. Uh, he hasn't faced Tampa recently, but you can see what he's done all season. Um, usually a lot of twos, but these fours are a little concerning in the last two games. So, but. Yeah, I would still say these pitches are about even. The bats are about even, so that takes away a money line. I'm not liking the total. Nerfy is out because both teams are middle on the road on averages. I need I need bottom 10 average for a Nerfy. So let's look at props, see if anything stands out. Zach here, his history versus Houston. He has a little bit. He has three at-bats. Not much to really talk about. Houston versus righties. They're better against lefties. So you can see the numbers, what they do. Some are great. There's nothing too terrible. There's nothing too great either. So let's look at some props real quick. Strikeouts is three and a half. Every strikeout prop is low today for a reason. I don't know why. 
Ooh, and he's gone over a bunch, but Houston, you saw it's fifth and or sixth in strikeouts in the last three. They don't strike out much. Hits. Yeah, he's gotten better at hits. Earn runs, up and down, walks and outs. Ooh, yeah, no. Let's go to Blanco. Blanco history, you know, it only has one game, not many at bats, nothing to talk about. Tampa versus righties, they're about to split either way, but some of these are just terrible against righties. These four dudes are terrible. So let's look at the props. Walks, oof, walks three, no. Strikeouts, six and a half. Tampa is striking out the absolute most in the right now. Uh, they, how much they struck out yesterday? It was a lot yesterday. It was uh, 14 times yesterday. Yeah, that makes, yeah, and that was against uh, Kikuchi, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was Houston Kikuchi did that. So, ooh, I think Blanco could get this. I'm liking, I think Blanco can get seven strikeouts on Tampa if they're striking out this much. Blanco over 6.5 Ks. I'm going to go with it. I know it's plus. I'm going to take it though. So, because I, if, if Kikuchi could do that, Blanco could do that. So, so we'll take that for sure. Uh, let's look at hits, earn runs, outs. Uh, I'm not like any of those. So, I'm not really feeling aside a total of Nerfy or any real props outside of Blanco. Let's look a little closer at the hitter props, see if anything stands out. <laughs> a Tampa Bay Ray over strikeouts is the number one thing. There you go. And then another Tampa Bay Ray. And there's a hit for Yandy. Okay, so you can see some stuff. Not too much is standing out. So I'm going to take that Blanco six and a half strikeouts. Um, if it bumps for some reason down to like five and a half, which I doubt it will, but if it ever did, I'll take that one, but we'll take six and a half for now and just move on to the next game. All right. Next up, we got Miami and Atlanta and a weird one. Uh, we have two relievers starting in this one for both pitchers, both sides. I mean, so Atlanta's minus 225 though. So interesting. The total is nine. 44% nerfy based on what they've done this year. 3.7 versus 5. That's 18th and 13th. Advantage Atlanta. 224, 217 batting in the last three. That's 9th and 22nd. It's not real advantage, but maybe slight at Miami. It's slight. I mean, it's 0.007. That's not much, that's no advantage at all. And Miami is second to last in strikeouts, only behind Tampa at 12 strikeouts. Meanwhile, Atlanta is at 10 for 22nd. So take with that what you will. Pitchers, we got Grant Holmes out here. Look at this dude. Look at this man. You can see what he does. He's been giving up runs. That's what he does. So you can see that. So, oh, you can see the stat. He did strike out eight and five innings against Milwaukee last time. So he is a reliever, but I guess it looks like he might be coming slowly into a starter. So maybe a short term starter with the bullpen. So, and then Tyler's going out there. His last game was also against Milwaukee, oddly enough. Seven and four for four innings. He didn't do too well. So, but you can see the numbers, what he's done. He gives up runs too. So we have two bullpen dudes. We also have two offenses are just mid. That's the best word I can put it is mid. So Miami striking out a ton. We have Holmes here who struck out eight and five innings. Let's look at props. See what stands out. Let's come over here first. Who we got? Brent. History. Do we have a history with Grant Holmes? Let's see. Nope. Uh, Miami versus righties, they're pretty good against righties. So that's something. And mm, there's nothing, I mean, that's terrible. But outside of that, we don't, there's 373 for Edwards. But outside of that, there's nothing really to talk about. Uh, we're not going to cover, well, what's the strikeout prop? Four and a half. This would literally be gambling because we've only seen him do it one time. And just to see, I just, mm -mm, I can't do it. I can't do it. And what's hits, walks? Yeah, I'm not doing all that. And then we'll see if Holmes has history. Nope. <laughs> I mean, not Holmes. Um, Tyler. Tyler has history. Yeah, we have a little bit. We have four total bats of history. That ain't much. Braves versus Rotties have been very up and down. Some of the bad ones are just bad. 164, 149, 210. These aren't good numbers. 205, 179. This, this, ugh, not good. And then you got the props and what they've done uh, this year. Strikeouts is, no. This is just terrible. This is just the definition of garbage. That's what I'm going to call this. Like, I mean, come on. This is a Saturday game. You set this up for this is this should be the Tuesday game. What is this? This is terrible. So I'm going to pass completely on this nonsense and just move on to a real game. All right, next up, we got Colorado and San Diego. San Diego's minus 205 with an eight and a half total. I had someone in the comments make the statement that they hate when I pass up the Rockies game because that's their team. Well, let me tell you this. When I grew up, the Rockies are my team too. And you know as well as I do, they basically suck usually. So that's what they do. You would think a team so isolated with no real competition with that 
multiple states away. There's no one close to him. What, KC might be the closest thing? Maybe Arizona? Who's close to Colorado for real? Think about it. Look at a map. But instead, the owners just don't want to spend money. So the team will never be good as long as that ownership is still in place. So, I mean, it's a waste of talent. Ah, it's just, oh, it annoys me. So you can see, let's get to the game. I digress a little bit. So we can see San Diego is better when the offense, four runs versus 5.3, slightly better San Diego. 218, 252, slightly better San Diego. And Colorado is striking out a ton at 11.3. So you got to give the advantage to San Diego. Pitching, some guy named Tanner Gordon's going out there. He's pitched three times and has given up everything to everyone he faces. So <laughs> that ain't good for Colorado today. So, hmm. Martin Perez is going out there freshly acquired from Pittsburgh. You can see what he's done. I mean, he was rough these two games, but he was good this game and good this game. So, I mean, Mark Perez is pretty decent, so can't really complain. Um, he doesn't pitch too terribly much, but we'll see. He, he seems like he's better than Gordon. So Gordon has not had a good game yet, unless you consider that's a good game. So let's look a little closer to see what we got. We'll start with Tanner. I'm talking bad about Tanner. Let's see if we have a history. Nope. Okay, San Diego versus Rides. I'm sorry, Tanner, it might not be a good game for you because they are really good against righties. You can see all the numbers. So, oh, that ain't good for you, buddy. Okay, they're good against righties. Let's look at the props. Earn runs is two and a half. Um, huh? <laughs> what? Do you expect Gordon to come out and pitch a gem today against San Diego? What, is his, what are these numbers? All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hit strikeouts, hits. What? What is going on here? Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Let's go to Perez. Let's look him in two. I'm I'm a little bit a little confused right now. I'm a little a little kerfuffled. So we can see Perez has a history. We can see the stats. Not really good. I mean, yeah, two at bats, six twenty five for McMahon's actually pretty decent. That's not the only one. Some of these are just straight zeros. Blackman's three hundred, but Blackman got hit in the eye yesterday. I don't know. He probably won't play today. If he does, I am shocked because that thing went. Like he was in a UFC fight, so. Ooh, yeah, and Colorado versus lefties. Eh, 50-50 split. The ones that are bad are very bad. <laughs> the ones that are bad are terrible, so. All right. Eh, strikeouts, hits, earn runs, outs. Yeah, I'm not liking any of that. I want to, okay. I'm, okay, hold up. Let's go back here. Nope, let's go here. He pitched six innings, three innings, six innings. Does he pitch enough innings to even get the hits? I don't think he does. If he gets, if he goes six, he's probably, he gave up five, six, and four. It's two and a half. I gotta, I gotta take that. Gordon, over 2.5 earned runs. You gotta take that. And on top of it, we can also come over here. And if you don't like San Diego 205, you can always go team props. You can go San Diego runs, look at four and a half and get an even better number. Instead, that's what I'm going to do. Instead of Gordon two and a half, I'm just going to take San Diego over 4.5 run runs for the whole game. Because if he comes out after three innings, hey, I got me over four and a half for the whole game. That's what we're going to do. San Diego team total over four and a half. That just feels good because you mix it with this offense is doing good. And we saw the hit, they hit that uh, the hands pretty good too. So matchup, or was it bang? San Diego, his righty is really good. So that all makes sense. So that's what we're going to go with. We're going to take that. I'm, do I put San Diego in the parlor? I think I'm going to. Am I crazy today? I think I am. San Diego, my line. I got to do it. I, hmm. Colorado's won three in a row. I'm going to take that off. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're just going to go San Diego team total over four and a half and just move on to the next game. Just realized I forgot to look at props. So let's take a look at them real quick. So you can see 100%, 90, 90, not much. It's Brian's get a strikeout. Tovar to get a hits at 90%. Bogers to get up. You can see the stats here. They're pretty good. Not too much is standing out here. So I figured I want to add this on real quick. Okay, now we can go to the next game. All right, next up, we got the Dodgers and the Athletics. You can see LA is a pretty heavy favorite with the eight for the total. 51% nerfy based on what they've done this year. Offenses, the runs are tied at 3.7 for 18th. Meanwhile, Oakland has a big advantage in batting average, 255 versus 163. That's 9th and 29th. And LA is striking out a ton at 11.7, which is second from last. 
So, and the Dodgers have lost three in a row, worth noting. So you got to give Oakland all the advantages in the offense. Looking at the pitchers, we have Flaherty going out there and hit the newly acquired Dodger. You can see what he's done. Dude has had great games outside of his one game against Angels. The games have been good. So great pickup for the Dodgers. Spence, he's an elevator. He is very up and down. You see, great game, bad game, bad game, great game, bad game. You see the games. So he's very elevator-like. Clarity gets the advantage in this one. Oakland gets the advantage in the bats. That cancels out. Can't take a money line. Nerfy can't take it when uh, we have Spence being so up and down. Oakland has a top 10 batting average right now. Can't do a Nerfy with that. So we're going to pass on that. Go to the props. We have Spence going out there. Spence history. There's nothing. Versus right, Dodgers versus righties. Um, the only one that matters is Otani because Rosario's 299. Sure, Freeman's not playing right now, so it's I don't know why they keep putting him in here when he's not even playing. He hasn't played since like the 25th of July, so yeah. So you guys see a lot of 200s, so they've been struggling a good bit. Um, and we can look at Flaherty real quick too. His history, he actually has a history a little bit. It was all one game, but you can see what he's did. He's done. Uh, Oakland versus righties. We got some info. We got some bad info. So it's up and down. McMahon's 293. Rooker's 293. So see what you get. So let's look at the props. We'll start with Spence first. Strikeouts, hits, earn runs, walks, and outs. I don't like any of these props. I need some consistency in my props. And this is just a trap. This is a, this is a coin flip right here. 16 and a half. Ugh, terrible. And let's look at Flaherty's props. Uh, strikeouts. Oh, he's mm, no hits. I mm, no, no outs. The another coin flip. I don't like these. And spent strikeouts. I want to take a closer look at real quick. Spent strikeouts. He's only gotten three, five out of ten times. And then he has this right here. He did pretty good. None of which with the Dodgers. I know Dodgers striking out a ton, but I don't know if I want to take him to get five strikeouts when he's only done it five out of ten times. The whole season so yeah no i'm not i'm not doing that so for me personally don't like those props let me show you the hitter props just to show them off so we can see them 80 percent as high as we go which means at eight out of ten and you got runs hits hits hrr strikeout strikeout bases bases you, you could probably build something out of that i will most likely build something later just not right now so for me i don't like anything if anything i'll lean oakland a little bit but unless the uh I don't like, no, I don't. I only, I lean nothing. So for me, I'm going to completely pass on this one and move on to the next game. All right. We got the Mets and the Angels. It's pretty much a pick em. Slight, slight lean to the Mets. Nine is your total. 56% nerfy based on what they've done this year. You can see 3.3 versus 2.0. They're both in the bottom eight when it comes to offense. Slight advantage, New York. 235 for 15th for the Mets in the last three. Angels 212 for 24th in the last three. So slight advantage in New York again. And strikeouts. New York is striking out a good bit more than LA is. So look at the pitchers. We have David Peterson going out there. Uh, he's been he's been there. <laughs> I mean, he's nothing bad. This is his worst game. Was trip as a foe for foe. He put up a Wendy's. And that's his best. That's not his worst. I mean, if that's your worst game, I'll take it. So pretty decent numbers. Hasn't faced the Angels recently. Soriano's going out there. Soriano's been good. Same thing, pretty good numbers. Four earned runs is most. So we got two pretty good pitchers. We have two pretty mid offenses. Not enough for not mid enough for me to take a nerfy because I need mm, maybe. Let's look a little closer. Nerfy might be in play. I'm thinking about it. So we have Soriano history versus Mets. He a lot of zeros, but it's like one at bat. So and then he got a hit. So okay, cool. Mets versus righties is not good. They're better against lefties. Everyone knows this. This is a pretty much common fact. This is knowledge. So, so we have that. Let's look at some props. Outs <laughs> fell off the cliff. Strikeouts is a hell no. Hits is a no. Earned runs is I don't like any of those. Let's go Peterson now. Peterson. The Angels hit well against Peterson. You can see the stats. Pilar has a 4.29 average and seven at bats. Now three, yeah, and then 400 for Drury. I mean. That's they're all green, but uh, yeah. And then Angels versus lefties, they do decent. Wow, Ward, Pilar, Stefanik, Rafingo. You know, you can see they do well. Now some struggle hard, obviously, but they they have some good hitters against lefties. So that makes me want to take the nerfy off the table because now I'm a little concerned. So um, makes me want to lean to LA all of a sudden because the pitchers are pretty equal. I think Soriano's and Peterson's pretty equal on that. 
The bats were slightly leaning New York, but LA is struggling, but now they face a lefty. What is LA's team total over? That's a fun one. Let's look at that. Team total, LA runs. Let it be three and a half. Let it be three and a half. Three and a half is minus 150. Four and a half is plus 115. That might be fun. They had one run in their last game. They're only been getting 4.2 the last two weeks. Ooh, they are terrible. I know they face lefty since then. Okay, now I'm going to pass on that. Ooh, did I look at all the props? I think I did. Let's do the show, show the hitter props. A lot of garbage. We even got red on the screen down here. You can't see it, but uh, it's just... Oh, these are pictures. Hold on. <laughs> Let me update that. Now we got better. Okay, here we go. This is bases, hits, bases, 90s, 80s, whole bunch of 80s. A lot of... I need to take strikeouts off. The strikeouts are super high priced. Um, I'll do that for next video. I'll make sure strikeouts don't show up so we can see a little bit better. But see the main ones like your hits, your HRRs, your bases, your uh, maybe home runs. I might throw that in there. Um, might even give it some screen. So improvising, trying to make it better. So you can see those. So for me, I, I lean LA, but not when they've been like this in the past two weeks. So I'm going to pass on this one and move on to the next game. All right, last one's going to be easy because it's a bullpen game for one of the teams. It's Philly and Seattle, and somehow Seattle is still only a 118. Over under is eight. Looking at 49% nerfy based on what they've done. 4.3 versus 7.3. That's 15th and 5th in the last three. Advanced Seattle. 233 versus 245. That's 17th and 11th. Advanced slightly to Seattle. And neither team is striking out all that much. They're both in the top 18. So, hey, good job. So, you got to give Seattle the offensive lean so far. I would say for pitching, here's the issue. Um, Philly's going out there with Orion Kirkering, whoever that is. Who? Who's that little Snoop Dogg meme? <laughs> Who? You can see what he is. He He's not going to pitch more than inning. That's what he's going to do. And then Bryce Miller's going out there for Seattle. What he does, you can see what he does. He's... I mean, pretty good overall. Can't complain. So we should get at least six good innings out of them. Uh, Philly's offense is mid right now. Apparently, Bryce Harper hasn't got a hit in forever. So unless something changed last night that I missed, let's look at props. Look a little closer. We can look at Bryce Miller. That's all we can look at. So uh, we can see history. Five at-bats for Hayes. Not much. Phillies versus righties. There is, some are good. Some are not. 316 for Turner, but also 313 for Bone, but outside of that, not too great. So, mm, let's look at props. Hits is a no. Strikeouts, mm -mm. not feeling it. No, no. And, yeah, mm, that is six innings. I just said that, but he shows he cannot go six sometimes. So, and it's Philly. They have the talent. They're just, they're just mid right now. So, um,. Part of me wants to take Seattle money line. Part of me wants to leave it alone completely and call it a day. Ooh, and when I say that out loud, I got to take the leave it alone because I let's look at the props for the hitters at least. Let me show those, see if anything. We got some 90s on here in the last 10. We got some 80s. You can see what we got, like, but hit singles, uh, Turner over one and a half HRR. You can see what we got here. I'm going to make sure strikeouts are on the list tomorrow for these. So we have all that out there. I am going to just pass on this. I know Seattle's slightly favored. Uh, they have the better pitcher, but uh, it's a late night game. I'm going to be watching UFC later. It's Saturday night. got things to do. So we'll just call it a night right there. End it. Call it a game. Okay, that's it. That's all 15 games. Broken down, talked about, discussed, analyzed, dissected, if you will. Gave out the plays for each game. There is a money line parlor today. So I'm going to go Casey, Boston, Minnesota. Put them three together. Why not? Let's have some fun with it. So uh, the bats, if you watched the video, you saw I went through each one talking about the bats. Uh, if you want the whole list, the recap of what I'm playing without watching this video, you got to become a YouTube member or just join Discord because I put it out for both well before the video gets posted. So And members on both sides get the video early too. So try to hook up the people that support me. So try to support you as well. So on top of that, check out Outlier, link in the description. It's you see how awesome it is. I use it every time, every day, every video. Drop a like, share, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you're playing because I tail a good many plays that you don't know about. Because I see it, I go, Ooh, I like that. I put a bet in for it. So I like it. So keep doing that. So on top of that, we will see you tomorrow. Peace.